So how y'all doing? Uh, we're going on a road trip. A little, uh, little saw hunting, I guess you could say. But a uh, small group of saws came up for sale locally. Really good price. So I'm headed to check them out. Uh, I'm not 100% certain what's in the group, but it's worth the drive. It's like an hour drive, so I'm going to go for it. Now, in the meantime, during this little road trip, I will, basically, I, I made a video of one of the most frequently asked questions right now, and that's basically what I do for a living. So, I made a video for that, and I'm going to show that to you now. I do want to say, uh, I got some footage coming of a build that uh, that I did, and I, I just hadn't released any of the footage yet. The uh, some of the footage got corrupted, so it's it's not complete. But I'll give you what I got. Homelite Super XL 925. Uh, it's an 82cc saw. Reporting it, and you know, we're gonna have some fun with a big saw. I don't, I, I'm gonna try to get you that footage here in the next couple of days. Uh, get started on that. Uh, I'm still waiting on parts for the that House of Warner 371 and the uh, Poland 245. So I'm kind of sitting without anything to do. So I decided to go ahead and get that, this, uh, this uh, home light built done. Uh, it's a, it's a pretty fast build. Not very difficult to tear apart. Um, Ran into a couple of issues, but nothing that wasn't fixable. You know, I'll chime back in whenever I get the solves, get them loaded up, if I get them. You know, we still got to negotiate, but uh, I'll chime back in whenever the time comes, and we'll see what's there. A big mystery here. But in the meantime, just check out this quick video on you know what I do for a living. Uh, it's nothing special. You know, nothing exciting. It's just a job. Alrighty. See you in a few. Alright, so some of you have asked what I do for a living. I did this once before, but I'll just go ahead and give it a quick rundown again. Uh, this is me. These guys here, these are me. I, I do um, secure document destruction. Uh, you know, all your checks, all your sensitive material that goes through your banks and doctors and whatnot uh i'm the guy who goes around and collects that stuff up gets it all destroyed you know make sure your sensitive information stays secure um now i i actually do all the sales all the scheduling everything for these two trucks uh so i'm kind of like a, a one-man show i guess you can say uh, this is the truck that I drive. This is my primary truck. This is our backup truck uh, and Sometimes, you know, I got too much of a workload or whatever So we'll send somebody out on the other truck or we're on both to help you know, keep things moving smooth but uh, uh, Most of my jobs are just you know smaller volumes like a garbage can Maybe two garbage cans, but say you got a hospital uh, You could be there half the day running around a hospital collecting this stuff and then you also get the jobs where somebody will call you and say, hey, I got 50 skids of stuff that I need destroyed. I'll go in and I'll clean up all 50 skids, get it destroyed. You know, it's a job. But that's what I do. I, didn't, I was not looking for this job whenever it uh, came along. It, uh, it just kind of fell on my lap. And throughout the years, I guess, because of the way I was with customers, they ended up giving me the whole operation to run. And that's what I do. Uh, it's more complicated than you'd think. You know, making sure because you gotta watch. You gotta 
you got to make sure you're making this x number of dollars per hour that each truck's on the road and your fuel and it's just it's it's, it's more complicated than you'd imagine now this is just one thing that i do though i also will run the triaxles these are the the big roll-off dumpsters trucks because we are primarily a trash company so i will run triaxles and you see we got a whole line of vehicles uh that's one of our service trucks from the garage we have a line of trucks on the other side of the wall too uh, what this is this is natural gas all of this is all natural gas so this whole section here this is everybody fueling up they just basically got a hose you can if you look up there you see the hose connects to the truck refuels the truck overnight um now they're all full now it doesn't really take all night and this is the pump station to refill them but these are front load garbage trucks they load your trash from the front lift the dumpster way up in the air and it dumps down from the top and packs it in there's some rear load dumpsters down there or rear load trucks which most of you are probably used to seeing the other side of the wall is almost all rear load we have everything from you can see one axle little one axle trucks all the way up to triaxles. I think this Peterbilt here is a triaxle, yeah. So here's our one of our roll-off trucks. It's a triaxle. But this is kind of what I do for a living. 99% of my time is spent on this job right here because that's my primary duty. But you know, everybody has slow periods, and if it's slow. You know, I could be on anything. Now this is just these, this side of the road. Remember the flood picture I showed you? So there's, there's where I was standing when I took that picture of the flood. See it down there? The water level you see, ooh, where's my finger? There, that little white sign down there, water level was all the way up onto that sign. Let's give you an idea. Uh, whenever I took the picture, the BHI sign over there, the letters were partially covered. And then as you get over here, this way, these bushes and stuff, the road, it, it was actually deeper down there because of the way the, the grade of the road is. And if you look down there, that's a recycling center. That's for basically where they sort plastic, aluminum, glass all that stuff out and get it all separated and sent for recycling all the way down there that's an office that's where you know our HR department is and all that sort of stuff this over here on the edge of this building it's like a long hallway that's where all the sales work happens um, there's a bunch of offices lined up down through there everybody's on the phone making sales uh, my office is on the very far end of that. The building you see here, so most of this is for cardboard and paper. That's where they bail up the cardboard, get it loaded on the tractor trailers and get it sent out. The end there is garage. It's a, it's just a little three bay garage for our mechanics. We don't do much more than server stock trucks. A lot of the more complicated stuff goes out down here you'll see there's a whole uh, see there's a whole bunch of trucks down here those are all diesels uh, there's probably another 20 down there but that's where all our diesel trucks are sitting see the big gray building there that is a transfer station so all the trash that comes in comes through that building gets loaded up on the track trailer and sent out to the landfill so this is just one of our yards. Oh, there's more <laughs> over there. That's a paint shop. So our dumpsters, we have like a body shop for dumpsters. That's where that is. They, they're constantly having to replace floors on them and everything else. You just you can't help it when you have thousands of dumpsters out there. They brought out and you bring them in, you throw a new floor on it, paint it up and set it out. And that's what those guys do. There's only two of them in there that do that job. And then on the far end, you can kind of see the roof. That's Wash Bay over there. 
and our fueling station. But this gives you a quick rundown. Um, this is just one of our yards. We have, this is Altoona, PA. We have another facility in Bedford, PA. We have one in Huntington, PA. We also have one in Jonestown, PA. And we have one in Cumberland, Maryland. So just to give you an idea, we have about 60, 60 to 80 trucks on the road any given day. So you can see here's a bunch of rear loads lined up down the line. And these are all natural gas. I wish you could be here right now. It's it's an odor like you've never experienced. <laughs> so there's how natural gas works. Uh, comes up this hard line right here. I got this zoomed in. There we go. Comes up this hard line, up and out, down the hose. Plugs right into the truck. And fuels are up. Simple as that. This is one of our cab over. Or, They fuel up to about 3,500 PSI fuel, but there you go. That's what I do. And there's a little bit more of stuff. And then here, the truck, we got to pull the rear wheels off. She's due for inspection. I'm doing drums, wheel cylinders, everything on the rear wheels. And I might throw new leaf springs on. I don't know. They need replaced. So we might do that too. There's the wheels. My, my daily driver. She needs a bath pretty bad. She hasn't had a bath in about a year. But some people asked. So there you go, give you an idea. I am a class, I'm a class B CDL holder. So I hold a class B license. Alrighty, we'll call it that for today and a little intro of what I do for a living. Alrighty, later. Alrighty, so welcome to the bed of my truck. There's one old one. Uh, I think it's a Disson or Dyson or Henry Disson or whatever. Mercury or something along that line. I'm not familiar with them. I don't plan on really keeping this one. These aren't my style, but we'll see. Maybe I will. It looks to be mostly intact. Then we got two Pioneers here. We got this little one. Pioneer, this is a 620. Now come my two favorites. The Home Light 26 LCS. We'll do more video on these later, but just a quick show off here. She might be, she missing one or two parts, I think. But I think we can get this one going. It has compression, it does turn over, but everything at the trigger here, everything's froze up. So we'll have to do some work there. And then back here, some of you guys will like this one. Old McCulloch. Uh, what is this? I forget. 43? 47. There you go. Little McCulloch 47. She turns over, got compression. That's about all I know now. But. She does turn over with compression.
trigger is uh, something goofy as a trigger. We'll have to figure that out. It's real stiff. Otherwise, everything seems to be intact. Now we got some bars too. <sighs> some, a bunch of the old school style bars. You know, the ones I'll never use. This one here, I thought was intriguing. There's no rail on it. Never seen one like that. I don't know what they get used for. That bar has no rail. One of the few bars it has riding on it. It looks like the same mount as that one that doesn't have a rail. And one of these bars is an old McCulloch. This is an old McCulloch bar. You can kind of barely see the writing and the little goose figure on the top. And there's a replacement starter for that Dyson or whatever, Diston. That's a model D0100, I guess. So that's our little chainsaw score for the day. Going for a bump of ride here. Alrighty. Uh, I can tell you all of it was less than a hundred dollar bill. All of it. So I'm happy with that. It's worth that in spare parts at the very least, you know? I don't plan on keeping all of them. Uh, two of them I'll probably keep. But I probably, I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna keep the Pioneers or that Dyson or Distant or whatever it is. Uh, I haven't decided. I might keep the bigger Pioneer, the 620. We'll see just to have, I guess. <laughs> uh, the Helmlight and McCulloch, we'll try to get those running. We'll work to get those running again. But that's our little chainsaw score for the day. So, hope you enjoyed this one. Later.